G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, got the cap on, so we must be doing boats, right? It must be a video on the War Spite. Uh, it's coming up. It's coming up. I am working on the War Spite, doing some 3D printing. There will be boats and things. It's coming up. But I've had a heck of a week. Absolutely busy as a bumblebee, you know? Like a one-legged man in a bottom-kicking factory. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, the War Spite will come probably next week. All right, so just be patient. Please be patient. Maybe you're waiting for this one, the St. Louis. Well, that's coming up as well. Yes, it is. I've got some rigging to do on that, and I will show that. You may be wanting this one. Oh, goodness. The Prince, all right? Yes, I've promised to build it. I am working on it. But it's going to take a little longer, right? <laughs> as you can see, there's a few ships on my bench. We will get to that. We will get to that. No, the product of this video is, well, it all came out of the last week of suffering the build for that new tooled Airfix Bulldog, right? Now, it should have been a lovely kit. Brand new, 2024 CAD tooling. Should have been terrific. But the instructions drove me to despair. They are bad, okay? The part order and numbering and the whole, the whole logic of it, it was just bad. It really was. It was not enjoyable for me, all right? And maybe I am an old bugger set in my mindset and only I think of old Airfix kits but yes, that's right. I think of old Airfix kits because they were bloody fun. Now it is 172nd and the Bulldog's 148, but this is twice the size aircraft. So essentially you're still getting the same amount of plastic, right? So for comparison, I think we could compare what's this like? What's the engineering like? What's the logic in the assembly like? You know, basically what's the part count like? What's the fun level like? And more importantly, what are the bloody instructions like? Do they make sense? Well, I even found the original 1967 instructions and printed them out. Yeah, because this is actually a 21st century kit. Yeah, this is 2001, I think, Rebox. But it's good enough for us to have a bit of a chat. I mean, the plastic is the new plastic, so it's not the old plastic. But I've done plenty of videos where I've shown the old plastic and how much I like it. But that's not what I'm talking about. I want to know the logic. How do they think with the instructions? How do they think with the assembly? Overall, if you try to put this together, would you go insane? Roll music. So, what do we get in the box? Well, it's quite a big box, as you can see. It only just sort of fits on the camera here. And this is, of course, a 21st century reboxing. It is not the original white box. So, the kind of plastic and maybe even the quality of the molding not the original engineering, is may have suffered. But we can still extrapolate from that the fun factor. And the fun factor is what I'm all about here. Okay, so here are the redone instructions in 2001, which are kind of like your modern Airfix instructions, right? And so you have got 38 steps. And uh, they're pretty well sticking to the original orders. Oh, not really. No, they're not. They're, not. they're all over the place. Like a mad woman's sandwich. Here are... A reprint that I found online of the original instructions. Lovely big description here, all in anglaise, right? <gasps> Look, beautiful exploded diagrams of all the parts in number order. You start with part number one, you go all the way to part number 170 or whatever it is. You build in order. And the instructions tell you. They name every part. They tell you how it fits. They warn you of these problems. Ah, oh, joy, rapture. And look at this. We're going to have some interior in this. Ooh, okay, see? Even back then, we had interior. You may notice straight away, those wings look a bit short. There's a good reason for that. We move into the kit. Look at that. They build it in three sections, okay? Center section, two sides, just like wingnut wings. And yet, this was half a century before wingnut wings. Hmm, who came first? The chicken or the egg? Yes, exactly. Airfix came first, I can tell you right now. Airfix thought of this way back in the 1960s, okay? They had this sort of engineering, these ideas. We will go through that in more detail. I mean, the painting guide's a bit dreadful. So with the painting guide, there really wasn't much to it here in the way of options. It was dark olive green all over, except for a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, a little bit of red, schmattered here and there. Not much to it, okay? But they do sort of go into detail here and describe things to you. Now, this is Becker's kit. It's not mine. So we probably won't want to wreck it too much. <laughs> ah, sorry, Becca, sorry. 
So it is pre-owned and someone has already repackaged it. Someone has put some suicide parts in here. Let's have a look. Oh, it's just the clear parts. This is my first look at this. So you're seeing it. So I'm seeing it. So, yep, not much. I mean, there's a few windows and things. There's not much. You don't get a lot. Well, this scale, at least it's not like 1 to 144 scale like that Handley page Hercules we did. This would be the original bag. I'm probably, no, it's not. That's got a Ziploc on it. No way. Epic's never did Ziplocs. So somebody has rebagged. At some stage they've decided, no, nah, everything is just, you know, not very, very safe in there because there's the, um, the holder, the clear sprue holder, right? And um, well, the clear sprue that those parts would have come off. So look, there's a lot to do. Oh, they've got bags within bags. So they obviously found some suicide parts there and they're another bag. Let's unpack this all. We'll have a good look through it and uh, see what's going on. I've laid out the parts, all 167 of them as best as possible. I mean, there are still a number here in the, um, the little bag. These are the ones that were escapologists. Yes, can't use that S word. I'll get demonetized. <laughs> so they, they didn't sue her side no they didn't <laughs> pilots crew look at them and they're only 170 second scale but look at these little guys they're um they are, they are they're not bad actually they're not bad at all they'll only require a little bit of clean up the focus of these kits was never figure painting really right they were there simply to help support the kit and give it a bit of scale but these guys aren't too bad at all they're quite a Quite nice. You probably can't see the detail that I'm seeing, but um, yeah, you've got a pilot there. He's got no legs. Douglas Bader again. And <laughs> you've got, I think that's a gunner, and that was a pointer. He'd go, hey, send the aeroplane that way. There's something to bomb over there, or whatever, you know? Yes. Now, this is quite big. Uh, I didn't realize exactly how big this was. That's the fuselage, right? So um, that's getting on to at least one and a half times the length of the uh, Bulldog, so she's certainly a lot longer, a lot longer. And the wingspan, well, I've actually uh, joined the three pieces here together. See, uh, I, I don't even think I can get them all on camera because there's a piece and there's a piece, right? And there's a piece. So, yep, just get it diagonally. It's huge, absolutely huge. Um, I should have measured it. I'll put it on the screen. I'm going to work out how wide it is. But um, the wingspan is quite enormous. And that's the clever little thing that you can join together. Now, FX, because maybe it's because parts disappeared off, they, uh, they start doing this. If I want to know the part number of a part and it's not even on the sprue, it doesn't matter. The part numbers are always hidden inside. Isn't that great? I've shown this before, but I think, it's, I think that manufacturers should go back to doing this. As much as possible, there'll be a side that never gets seen, but the part number is wonderful. It's really good, especially if you want to cut them all off and clean them up and everything, right? Props. Look at that. Now, remember, this isn't an original molding. It's original tool from 1967, but this molding is 21st century, but still nice and clean. I'm amazed. I thought I'd probably pull this out and be a ton of flash and, you know, and I'd have to apologize for everything. But no, that is clean. Nothing wrong with that. Nice sharp edges. Okay. That's really good. Tiny little parts. There's the odd little bit of flash here and there. You'll find it on um, trailing edges of wings. And I've sort of discussed it in the last video. If you want to get them nice and thin, all right, then yeah, you can end up with a little bit of flash. That's just part of the molding process inevitable to try and get a thin part so that's forgivable completely forgivable but generally the parts are actually very nice nothing wrong with this at all the detail it's reasonable look at the interior you're going to have a whole interior on this let's look at the instructions and discuss that more and this thing this is 57 years before the bulldog and all the can and the rest of it. All right, so as I said, you build up your wings and they're all made separately. Although I probably wouldn't glue those so much now because I want to know, is it actually going to be the correct, um, not only dihedral, but also just all the angles? Because usually your top wing is swept forward a little bit, back wing goes back. They seem to indicate that it's all straight up and down here, but um, there still is a bit of an angle there on the fall, so... I, I'd, uh, I wouldn't do that first up. I mean, I'd put that aside. That's a good section. But I would wait until I had the whole middle area done and I had this um, fuselage together, right? And then I had the bottoms of the wings here and I had my little top piece ready to go. And then 
dry fit it all together and see how these guys sort of the trick to do the other one make sure all the glue is wet on your struts when you put the whole wing area together and then let it dry even if some of it's just dry fit and then you know it'll set exactly in the right position otherwise you're you're taking a bit of a gamble maybe it it's i'm making it harder than it is but um there you go now the interior yeah look at this 67 years ago we did have an interior but it's just sensible just a few things a few tanks and a few odds and no bloody cradle or anything admittedly this is 170 seconds scale the cradle is molded in there that's all we need right there it is it's even got the little wiring braces molded on there as well i don't know if we can get that in the light but um it's all there and that's all we need that's terrific and sure there's a few little injector points and things like that but this is the interior not much of it's going to be seen now look here, this is a prime example. You've got like a whole run of parts here, okay? So FX lets you know you need this and it repeats itself four times. But then it shows you how it's going to go together there very clearly, okay? Undercarriage assembled, does the same with the trolley. And in the description, it even tells you this part to this part, that part to that part. You can't go wrong. It is so simple. It is so logical and it is so sensible. I just love this little part. It is just so... It's so nice and that part is here and to figure out what things are and what's going on all i would have to do is go down here and find well they're all in order so that's 54 so i just go through my instructions until i found 54. so here it is locate and cement the 16 bombs right 38 to 53 together cement detonators onto locating holes in bomb carrier so straight away i would know that was a bomb carrier and this to me was some of the joy and this was some of the best things to do with these sort of kits i could then find out what things were that i'm putting together and i would learn and this is the thing there is so much joy in a kit like this the instructions sure they're all one explode diagram but it's all explained to you it's wonderful the parts are really good uh, look i know i'm kind of gushing but this is fun modern cad airfix i'm not having fun with <laughs> So which one of these kits do I prefer? Or which one would be more enjoyable? Hmm. Bad instructions, vague, misleading everything, unnecessary interior and everything, which I'll never get seen. It's just too frustrating to make. Misleading instructions, just a whole lot of overcomplicated things that I don't really need. Simple instructions, logical instructions, instructions where there's lots of explanation that helps me out. Okay, is it a simpler kit? No, actually, it's quite complicated. Actually, the two of them are both complex kits, okay? That's the thing. But this is better explained, simpler in its engineering, so that it actually is easier to put together. I didn't really sort of go into the motors and everything. All the motors, they're repeated. The parts are shown in detail, how they go together. It's all explained. Just like that um, undercarriage thing is very clearly explained. I went through it and went, well, I understand everything. Now, is this because I grew up with airfix? Yes. Is this because I understand the airfix culture from back then? Well, yes. But I still was excited about building modern airfix. I still really wanted to like that Bulldog kit. I tried so hard. If I hadn't have liked the brand, I wouldn't have gone all the way to the end as I did and got the final thing basically just about assembled. There's only a few dry fit parts. But I did it. I made sure the kit is built. After that, it's painting and everything, which is a completely different thing. Painting is not normally kit dependent, you know, or manufacturer dependent. It's something you do personally to the level that you want to do, right? Is the modern kit more detailed? It's crisper, okay. But then again, technology has come a long way. I mean, for the technology they had back then in the 60s, that Airfix kit is a much better effort than what we've got there with the CAD, right? For what you could do today, FX, and how clever you can be, and how you can actually have things joined together in the programs and test and see how it all assembles. There is. There are assembly functions in CAD programs, right? I know. I designed this shit. You didn't do it. You didn't do your job. That was poorly engineered from that point of view. I know a lot of modelers are all going to gush about the detail and it's fantastic and look at the interior. I think they're missing the entire point. It's a hobby. It's to be enjoyed. It's not supposed to be an engineering task, right? It's not homework. It's what you do to decompress and have fun. And that 
even with all of its bloody struts and everything, because it is quite a difficult kit, and I know some people have said they really struggle and they can never get it out. Yep, it's a tricky kit. You need a bit of experience under your belt before you try something like that, especially doing biplanes. But at the end of the day, that is a lot more fun than the Bulldog, in my opinion. All right? Your mileage may differ. <laughs> you might go, oh, it's not a Terrier kit. I can't just put it in the box and go, it's done. No, you can't. It's an airfix kit. It does require some effort. It does require some working out. But at least it made sense back in the 60s. All right. Buttons, 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 button, button. You know the drill. The algorithm is hungry. It is ravenous for you for the button pushing. Button. I freaking know. I'm turning the wiggles. Um, yes. Buttons, push button, and if you can, buy me a curry. I really appreciate that. I could do with a curry right now. I'll probably have to give Becca a curry after I pulled his kit to bits and everything. Oh, what? Bass just come in with some news. Becca has given me this kit. He's decided he doesn't want to build it now. Wow. So I can actually build this kit, but not straight away. Let me know if you'd like to see me build it, but it won't be for a couple of months, right? Maybe not till the end of the year. But I'm really excited about this now. Oh, I'm excited about everything I review. Yeah, you know it. All right, well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed that. Bit of a look back in sort of history and nostalgia. But I think at the end of the day, the 60s and 70s kits from FX are far surpassed today's as far as a hobby to be enjoyed. FX has lost its way, has lost the focus of where it's going. It's got stuck down this whole marketing hole of having to produce lots of parts and cad this and cad that, trying to keep up with the other boys. No, pull back. Do what you were good at and produce the kits we loved. At least that's one old man shouting at the clouds opinion. All right, it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harriet Any. <laughs>